come with an offer to strengthen Rohan. Hera, daughter of Helm, I, Wolf, seek your hand in marriage. Lord of the Rings fans, rejoice. We're getting spoilt this year with the amount of content we're getting that is set in the land of Middle-earth. After Amazon Studios' Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power Season 2, slated to come out later this year, New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers have just dropped the first trailer for the film, Lord of the Rings, War of the Rohirrim. This is an anime adaptation of the events from the Third Age of Middle-earth, as stated in the book's appendices for the Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. New Line Cinema has assembled a stellar crew for this project, with legendary anime director Kenji Kamayama at their Helm. He's worked on some iconic titles such as Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex, Eden of the East, Blade Runner, Black Lotus, and Jin Ro, The Wolf Brigade, to name just a few. As it belongs to the New Line Cinema, this series will be set in the same universe as Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings and Hobbit films. Taking these things into account, and after seeing the first trailer, we're filled with massive excitement and optimism for this anime film set to drop this December 2024. Set around the year 2758 of the Third Age of Middle-earth, some 200 years prior to the events of the Lord of the Rings, this epic saga tells us the story of Helm Hammerhand, the legendary king of Rohan, along with his daughter Hera and their conflict with the wild men of Dunland and their leaders Freka and Wolf. The horse lords of Rohan, or the Rohirrim, are a warrior race of men who are renowned for their battle prowess on horseback. Their army, which primarily consisted of cavalry units, was feared by their foes and respected by their enemies. Kirion, the steward of Gondor, gave the lands of Calanarthon to their chieftain and first king, Eorl the Young, to establish a land for his people as a reward for aiding Gondor during a dire battle at the fields of Celebrant. They would rename this land as Rohan and serve as the chief ally of Gondor during the Third Age. Their charge against the forces of Sauron in the Pelennor fields during the siege of Minas Tirith in the final War of the Ring would be the stuff of songs and legends. Very few can match the riders of Rohan in battle. Their death charge is said to sound like thunder, and their fell songs drift through the battlefield, rallying their allies while filling their enemies' hearts with dread. We're so excited to see that we're getting a movie regarding the Rohirrim set during such an important part of their history, one which a lot of fans don't know much about in detail. The anime seems to take a few creative liberties with the story, judging by the trailer. Nonetheless, as long as it's not too egregious, we as fans are just excited to see this epic story come to life on the big screen. We'll discuss the actual story and what you can expect in a later video. For now, we thought we'd explore the characters that we know will be in the movie thanks to the trailer, in order to provide you with some context or even refresh your memory before you watch the movie in December. Without further ado, oaths we've taken to deliver you the best look of the Rings content, and now it's time we fulfilled them. Let's ride right into this video as we explore the characters who lived during this tumultuous period in Rohan's history and who will play a major role in the Lord of the Rings, War of the Rohirrim. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Old man. Helm the Hammerhand. Helm was the ninth king of Rohan and the last one of the first line of its kings. He ascended to the throne of Rohan in the year 2741 of the Third Age, at 50 years of age after the death of his father, Gram. Helm would inherit a kingdom rife with strife, primarily against the wild men of Dunland, who were said to have aided the Dark Lord Sauron before the last alliance of men and Delph banished him. He was a large, well-built man with a fierce temper that matched his strength. He later gained the moniker of Hammerhand due to him wielding a warhammer and killing one of his banner lords, Freka, with a single punch. Helm's reign would be marked with sorrow, as both his sons Haleth and Hammer would perish during the invasion of Rohan by the Dunlandings. Helm himself would garner an almost mythical reputation amongst his foes and friends, as the old king would venture out alone during this long siege of the Suthburg and kill his foes barehanded. Each time he'd venture forth, it'd be heralded by the sound of his battle horn. Thus, the Suthburg at Helm's Deep would come to be known thereafter as the Hornburg, the very place where the final battle of the movie and book Lord of the Rings The Two Towers would take place. One day, the horn of Helm Hammerhand would ring in the deep once more, but the king wouldn't come. The next morning, he'd be found frozen to death, looking like a statue with the grandeur of the kings of old, unbent and unbroken, and no enemy would dare approach him even then. He'd be laid to rest outside Edoras, and the white symbol moonflower that grew on the graves of the kings of Rohan would grow thickest where he lay, and his grave would appear as if it were covered in a thick blanket of snow throughout the year. You will live to regret this, old man. 
Freka. Freka was a powerful lord of Rohan who held a large amount of land on either side of the river Adorn in the West March area of Rohan. It was rumored that he had the blood of the folks of Dunland owing to his dark hair, even though he claimed to be a descendant of King Freyawine of Rohan. He had a tenuous relationship with the throne of Rohan and would never show up for the council meeting summoned by the king. He was largely held in distrust due to his own dubious nature, due to which many said that he coveted the throne for his own bloodline and his Dunlandian heritage. Freka would arrive at Edoras, the capital of Rohan, in the year 2754, with a large contingent of men to finally attend the king's council. During this council, he'd exchange insults with Helm the Hammerhand and try to intimidate the king into giving his daughter's hand to his son Wolf in marriage. After the council meeting ends, Helm would tell Freger to follow him outside the king's hall, Medusaled, where the two would engage in a fist fight. During this, despite landing a few blows on Helm, as shown in the trailer, he'd be killed instantly upon receiving a single blow from the king. He and his kindred would be declared renegades and enemies of the throne and would be banished from the kingdom of Rohan. He's dead? You will pay for this with your life. Wolf. Wolf is the primary antagonist of the story of the War of the Rohirrim. He is the son for whom Freka asked Helm for his daughter's hand and was killed as a result. Banished and disgraced, Wolf would return to seek vengeance for the death of his father against Helm and the Kingdom of Rohan. He would wage a war, which would see Helm and both his sons lose their lives. Wolf would ally himself with the Dunlandings of the surrounding lands along with those that dwelt at the time in Isengard and amass a huge army. He'd manage to avenge his father and their humiliation by conquering Edoras, even sitting on the throne of Rohan for a short period of time. Wolf would however be slain by Freyloth, the king's nephew, at the end of the story in the books. This might be altered in the movies, and he might actually be slain instead of Hera, the daughter of Helm, as she is set to be the protagonist of this film. In the trailers, we're shown that he and Hera had spent time together as children and were, in fact, childhood friends. It's also heavily hinted that he held some unrequited romantic feelings towards her, at least in the upcoming film. Their relationship as children and Wolf's feelings towards her are not explored in the books, but they're part of the creative liberty taken by the people behind the movie. It is, however, not entirely beyond the realm of possibility for this to have been the case even in the books, taking into consideration their status and proximity of dwellings. Wolf is being voiced by the British actor Luke Pasqualino in The Lord of the Rings, War of the Rohirrims. You know nothing of war. I'm the fastest rider you have. Hera. Hera is the primary protagonist of the Lord of the Rings War of the Rohirrims. She's the only daughter of Helm Hammerhand, whose hand was asked in marriage by Freka. She's shown to be an outspoken tomboyish character who's a shield maiden of Rohan, much like Eowyn, the sister of Eomer from the Lord of the Rings trilogy and films. Hera is shown to have affection for Wolf, but not in a romantic sense, as she's seen rejecting his marriage proposal in the trailer. According to the people behind the movie, a character isn't going to follow the typical warrior princess trope and is set to lean more towards the choices she makes and their consequences during the the course of the story. As Tolkien never expanded on her character and left her nameless, they had to come up with their own ideas regarding the character and her motivations. The director Kamiyama suggested that they look at the character of Eowyn and Aethelflaed, a historical female ruler from whom Tolkien drew a lot of inspiration for his female characters. She's most likely set to take the place of Freyloth, the tenth king of Rohan and Helm's nephew in the film. It is speculated that she's going to be portrayed as Freyloth's mother instead. Having fallen in love with Eowyn in the movie and books, we can't wait to see another shield maiden of Rohan. I am no man. Eowyn, the sister of King Eomer and niece of King Theoden of Rohan, Eowyn is a fiercely independent woman belonging to the royal house of Eor. She's seen caring for her king and uncle Theoden while he's under the spell of Saruman the White. After the king was freed by Gandalf, she harbored unrequited love for Aragorn, the future king of Gondor. When asked what she feared the most by him, she replied, a cage to stay behind bars until use and old age accept them, and all chance of doing great deeds is gone beyond recall or desire. She's not merely content with being left behind and protected, while others go on to do great deeds. To this end, she disguises herself as a man and rides into battle as one of the riders of Rohan during the War of the Ring. She would take part in the famous Battle of Pelennor Field, and here she would achieve the greatness that she sought by slaying the Witch King of Angmar, who was the leader of the Nazgul and chief lieutenant of the Dark Lord, Sauron. Eowyn would thereby fulfill the prophecy of the elf Glorfindel that stated, he will not return to this land. Far off yet is his doom, and not by the hand of man will he fall. Regarding the condition required, for the Witch King to die. She's able to do this because being a woman lets her overcome the condition set by the prophecy, which allows her to slay the leader of the Ring Wraiths. Eowyn returns to the Lord of the Rings, War of the Rohirrim, as the narrator of the story. She's voiced by Miranda Otto, who returns to reprise her role from the Lord of the Rings films.
Haleth. Haleth, the eldest son of Helm Hammerhand, and next in line to the throne of Rohan, was a great warrior loved by the people of Rohan and his family. He was born around the year 2716, the Third Age, during the final years of his great-grandfather Deor's reign. During the long reigns of his own grandfather Gram and then his father Helm, Haleth would take part in numerous conflicts against the Dunlendings. After his father insulted and killed Frecker, the half-Dunlending lord's son Wolf would return to wreak vengeance upon Rohan. When the would-be conquerors reached Edoras, he would stand alone to face the invaders in front of the gates of Medusal and would die slaying many of them while defending the Golden Hall. In another version of the story, Haleth would be slain outside the gates of Suthberg while retreating to it along with father and younger brother after having been defeated in a battle at the crossings of Eisen by Wolf and his army. It'll be interesting to see which version of this event the War of the Rohirrim will use. In the War of the Rohirrim trailer, he's seen sitting next to his father and is portrayed as a fairly good-looking man with golden hair. It's not clear who's going to be lending their voice to his character yet. Hammer. Hammer was the second prince of Rohan and brother to Haleth and Hera, children of Helm Hammerhan. He'd be born around the year 2719, during the Third Age, after the death of his great-grandfather, Deor. Just like his brother, he grew up in the courts of his grandfather, Gram. During his early youth, he participated in various battles against the Dunlendings with his father and elder brother by his side. Seventeen years into his father's reign, a new war would break out between the Rohirrim and the Dunlendings, who would be led by Wolf, the son of Freka. After being defeated by Wolf at the crossings of Eisen, he, along with his father would retreat to the Suthberg, the great fortress of Rohan located in the place that would later be known as Helm's Deep. There they would wait, besieged by Wolf's forces, even as an abnormally long winter descended upon the land. With no reinforcement or aid looking likely and the supplies dwindling fast, Hammer would lead an expedition outside the safety of the Suthberg in search of food against his father's council. The prince and his party would disappear into the snow and would never be heard from again. With his death, Helm would lose all his sons and the line of the first kings would end. In the War of the Rohirrim, he's depicted as a young man during the events of Frekus's death. By the time he, of Wolf's invasion and his death, Hammer should have been around 40 years of age. Just like Haleth, his brother, it's not known who will be voicing him for the film. Saruman the Wise. Revealed only in the Japanese version of the trailer, we know that Saruman is going to be making an appearance in the film. Saruman was one of the Istari, or wizards, as they come to be known in Middle-earth. He was the head of their order and considered to be the most powerful and wisest of them, even more than Gandalf before his fall. In the books, Saruman would appear in Rohan after the defeat of the Dunlendings during the coronation of Freyloth in Edoras. He would seek the king's permission to make the Tower of Orthanc in Isengard his abode. Isengard, which now lay deserted thanks to the Dunlendings that pre previously occupied it, having been defeated in the war. Freyalof, after taking counsel with the steward Bedan of Gondor, would decide to hand over the keys of the Orthanc to Saruman, believing that the White Wizard would prove a valuable ally to the north of his kingdom. Little would they know that Saruman's will was already bent towards the discovery of the treasures and powerful artifacts like the Palantir that lay within the tower. During the War of the Ring in the later days of the Third Age, Saruman would fall from grace and ally himself with the Dark Lord, Sauron. He'd go on to breed the foul race of the fighting Uruk-hai, who'd wage an all-out assault against Rohan. The Saruman that we'll see in this film will probably be just setting out down this dark path and won't be fully evil yet. It'll be interesting to see how Saruman fits into the movie's plot. With the late Sir Christopher Lee no longer amongst us to reprise this iconic role of his, the new voice actor will have pretty big shoes to fill. Regardless, it'll be a joy to watch Saruman on the big screen once again. Marvelous Verdict After being announced in June 2021, during the anniversary event celebrating the start of the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy, we're finally set to receive the War of the Rohirrim in theatres in December after four years. Outside of the characters we explored in this video, we got a glimpse of several important beasts from the Tolkien's legendarium, like the Great Eagles, Mumakil or Oliphants, and the Watcher in the Deep outside Moria. As they're based on Peter Jackson's vision of the Lord of the Rings, they follow the same artistic vision as that of the previous films when it comes to character and world design, granting a sense of familiarity, even though it is an anime adaptation. This is not the first time The Lord of the Rings will be receiving an animated adaptation. In 1978, a part of The Lord of the Rings would be adapted into an animated film by director Ralph Bakshi. Peter Jackson would use this film to draw much inspiration for his movies. It's taken us 46 years to get another animated film on this legendary high fantasy work by J.R.R. Tolkien. We're not complaining though, and are actually waiting for New Line Cinema to drop more trailers and information about The War of the Rohirrim. As soon as that happens, we'll be sure to update you as well. So, be sure to keep Keep an eye out for more videos on this movie and other Lord of the Rings related stuff on our channel. For now, we've come to the end of the video, and as much as we'd like to continue on our journey through Middle-earth together with you, we'll have to wait until our next video. We really appreciate your support. Thanks for staying with us until the end of this video. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.